Labrit. Did I get it right? So happy to be speaking to you at this moment in, in time, very much about reclaiming our old humanity in a broken world. So there's not one person in the audience, one man, woman, doesn't matter where, where you're from, who doesn't have the choice to reclaim our old humanity, invoke the power of forgiveness. Because I'm so old, I got to see a lot of it, which I'll share with you now. So in February 1990, a elderly black gentleman, very shy but very charismatic, walks out of prison onto the steps of Cape Town City Hall with the words, I come to you as your humble servant. I come to you as your humble servant and please don't leave the country because I need your hands in friendship. Nelson Mandela coming out in his 70s with no hatred in his heart. And that Friday, he's in the mosque, praying with the Muslims on a prayer rug. Saturday with the Jewish people in the synagogue wearing a prayer shawl. And Sunday, St. George's Cathedral, standing room only, millions of Christian people praying with Desmond Tutu for a land of togetherness. Election day. May of 1994, ABC, CBS, everyone's there hoping for the bloodbath. It's a good news story. Black on white, white on black. No violence at all. In none of the areas, none of the cities, none of the townships. Because Mandela said, it's time for peace. It's time for the triumph of the human spirit. And the only thing they could film, because I knew a lot of them, we drove over to Zoo Lake, a beautiful lake in the middle of Johannesburg. A huge group of handicapped children there holding hands, singing freedom songs. Singing freedom songs. This is the whole idea of what happens when you actually invoke the power of forgiveness and you decide that togetherness is our secret weapon. Togetherness is the train that we need to ride. Very, very much that feeling. The following Sunday after election, President Mandela invites all of the wives of the men who kept him in prison for 27 years to the presidential residence to break bread. It's time to let go of the past. And that's so much what the message is about reclaiming our old humanity. What happened, happened. Can we move on? And can we learn from the past? So... A long, long time ago, in 1962, a young charismatic president came to the University of California at Berkeley to rededicate the UC Charter. And it was fantastic. The excitement, of course, it's President Kennedy. And we're on University Avenue, I'm a young boy, 85,000 people, and we walk up through the campus and the crowd is on fire, electricity going. The president climbs up on the stage and invokes three words. He says, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. And for 20 minutes, the crowd goes crazy. My introverted mother's hugging a stranger. I said, mommy, who's that man? She said, I don't know. <laughs> Why are you hugging him? I don't know. And the next words, the next words. And this is our moment, another 20 minutes. And finally, the last line of age 10, I remember, and we will build a new world together. And they're out of the stands. They're out of the stands. And they are chanting, four more years, four more years, four more years. Well, it didn't go that way. Oddly enough, 56 years to this very date, at this moment in history, on November 22nd, 1963, our lives changed forever in Dallas, Texas. The age of innocence was over. Camelot dropped its final curtain. And we had to find a way to go on, which we did. But it will never, ever remove from my memory that 85,000 people 
in a Berkeley Greek theater stadium where Leonard Bernstein conducted the San Francisco Philharmonic a year before with wonderful songs from West Side Story, felt a moment of hope. They felt a moment of passion. They were ready to build together whatever we could. And very frankly, ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't that different than in 2016 when a young African-American presidential candidate began the chant of, yes, we can. Yes, we can. My son called me from Chicago and said, Dad, I finally get it. I get what that was all about in 1961. So the whole idea of togetherness, it is a choice. It's a choice, it's a choice, it's a choice, it's your choice, it's my choice. Are we going to collaborate? Collaboration is either a heartwarming experience or a heartbreaking experience. It's never easy. It's never easy. But again, it's the triumph of the human spirit, as Mandela said, move on. When we interviewed President Clinton once about who Nelson Mandela was to him, fantastic, because he was actually very emotional. He said, I could say fellow president, I could say personal friend, but actually Nelson Mandela is my spiritual teacher because he taught me not to hate. He taught me not to hate. There's no room for hatred. So as a professor at Berkeley, we're having meetings all over, having a meeting at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. I fly in from San Francisco. Of course, the plane's late. Anyone been to Detroit Airport? Okay, maybe someone in the back there. <laughs> well, it's a lovely airport, but there are no sign postings. Where are the taxis in a separate building? And I'm late, and I'm running over, and it's an important meeting. And I stand at the hospitality counter and say, excuse me, no one, what do you mean? A gentleman with his back to me, excuse me, could I get some service? And the man turns around, around 30. I look into his eyes and I see that he's handicapped. And I feel such shame. What am I yelling at this man for? He's doing his best. I said, I'm so sorry. Can you point me in the direction of the taxis? And he says very slowly, I will take you there. I said, no, 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 it's fine, you don't have to. He said, I want to take you there. It must have taken us 20 minutes to cross a hall like this. It would take us two because of his disability, but I went along on that pace. I forgot about the meeting. I actually no longer cared about the meeting because there was another movie going on. The movie well, was Gary, his name was Gary and myself. And we get to the taxi rank. 20 minutes later, I say, you are such a wonderful man. Thank you, he says, I will wait till you go. He said, you don't have to. I want to wait till you go. I said, okay. And it even hurts me, should I take out a $5 bill and said, wait, 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 wait. That's another language that belongs to another world. That's another society. Don't blow it, professor. And so I don't do it. And the taxi comes and I put forth my hand, takes my hand to the side, gives me a huge hug. I don't even know this man. And he says, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what just happened there was again the triumph of the human spirit. And a huge lesson for me, slow down, Professor, Mr. Important, slow down. Gary could be on a corner, being homeless, no job, no food, asking me for money. He's not doing that. He is doing his best. And it's my job to adjust to his rhythm. That's togetherness. That's the power of the human spirit. So one other quick vignette I want to share with you was I was very lucky to be a mediator in the Middle East peace process and one of the levels to do with the members of parliament. And it was quite something and we're in Cyprus and we're in this beautiful island and things are going really well. And we're going to have a lecture one night by one of the participants. So it's Egypt, Jordan, Palestinian Authority and Israel. And it got really friendly with the Palestinian delegation. And this guy Mahmoud says, Mark, you're coming tonight, right? I said, yeah, sure, why? He says, you're going to love it. I said, yeah, you're talking about an orphanage near Bethlehem, right? He said, uh, yeah, sort of. So I knew something was up. 
So we go to the lecture. Everything had been beautiful. Everything had been absolutely beautiful. And he gets up there, and his girlfriend's there, who's British, educated, and he speaks the first sentence, and she says, I just want you all to know that Mahmoud would like to talk tonight about the ethnic cleansing that's going on on the West Bank. At which moment the tables are turned over, the water pitchers are throwing, everyone lights up a cigarette, I don't know why, and we are in chaos. Absolute chaos. People going for each other's throats, people doing whatever. I go to UNESCO, help me, they said, we can't help you, you know how it is. Neutrality, I go to the other faculty and said, we, it's their issue, Mark. I said, oh, stop your university idea. It's their issue, someone's gonna get killed. So we keep the dialogue going, talk about anything, take people to the bathroom, two at a time, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. 22 hours after, it, I mean, about 14 hours after it happened. And suddenly a, a beautiful Palestinian woman rises. And she says, may I speak? Beautiful voice. She said, does everybody know the song from the Six Day War called Jerusalem of Gold? Which I did know that song. She said, well, here's the way it goes in English. She said, there's a verse. And she sang it with the most beautiful voice. She said, tonight we shall be going to the Jordan by way of Jericho. Tonight we shall be going to the Jordan by way of Jericho. And the breathing starts and the sobbing starts. She says, does everybody understand? That's where my grandmother has her farm. That's where I come from. I wouldn't walk on your farm. I wouldn't walk into your home. That's where I live. I'm asking for respect. I'm asking for respect. At which moment? Five Israeli women looking like Giselles in white like a slow motion movie, get up. And they move towards her, just like this, just like this, in an embrace, and they cover her in an embrace. Everybody's sobbing, everyone suddenly holding hands. They'd lost brothers, they'd lost sisters, they'd lost sons, they'd lost daughters, they'd lost a lot of people, and suddenly we're one community out of the chaos we were reborn like the phoenix. We're one community. And we were able to go on. So what does all this mean? The power of the human spirit, reclaiming our old humanity. Sometimes hard things happen and don't run away from them. Sometimes it's a difficult experience that the magic is just about to begin. You with me? The magic is just about to begin because something difficult happened. So I have three things to leave you with. The first thing, make a decision, make a choice about togetherness. Be with other people, collaborate with other people. The sum of the parts, of course, is greater than the whole. We can do anything. The second lesson, it's time to stand up, and I don't care what you stand up for. If you want to stand up, for the underdog, do so. You want to stand up for women, stand up for women. You want to stand up for Hong Kong? You want to stand up for gun violence in America? Some sister Emma Gonzalez? Stand up. There is no room for people that aren't going to stand up. And finally, it's a call to action. Actionalize your plan. You feel bad about old people? Get into the old people's home and start reading. You feel bad about your kids' teachers? What are you at home for? Drinking your coffee, get into the schools. Make it an active act of generosity, the generosity of spirit, the compassion of spirit. So again, think about that it's a choice for each of us. Let's not be a victim. Let's not get into blame. Let's move on the way people have moved on forever in time constantly giving rebirth to the possibility of new beginnings. I want to leave you with a few words of Nancy Wood, who writes beautiful Native American poems. And she says, hold on to what is good, even if it is just a handful of earth. Hold on to what you believe in, even if it's a tree standing by itself. Hold on to what you must do. 
even if it's a long way from home. Hold on to life. Hold on to life, even if it's easier to let go. And hold on to my hand. Hold on to my hand. Hold on to my hand, even when it's time to leave. Thank you.